this presentation, I'm going to uh, give, uh, uh, about, I'm going to talk about uh, NVH in automotive vehicles. And uh, with the changes happening in the automotive industry, I'm going to talk about what are the challenges uh, that affect NVH design in automotive systems. And digital simulation has been playing a major role um, in NVH design. And we will be seeing as how these um, the changes of the NV, how these challenges are being, uh, how, how we are going to empower uh, digital simulation in handling these challenges. And uh, by the way, I work with Delphi, and um, I would like to also provide you a, a brief uh, uh, overview of how digital simulation is handled in uh, uh, Delphi. Okay. Now, if you look at uh, uh, a car, for example, it's just, now there are so many, uh, the, the NVH environment is pretty complex. You know, there, are, uh, there are so many sources of uh, vibration and noise. Uh, for example, if you look at uh, the, the bonnet, below the bonnet, you have the, the engine noise and vibration, which comes from the combustion and the movement of the reciprocating and rotating parts. Then you have the fuel injection systems that uh, stand upon the, that are, that are mounted on the engine. And uh, these, for example, the injectors, the fuel rail, the high pressure pumps, these also generate um, vibration and also radiate noise. You have the fan and the cooling systems, the air intake manifold also generates noise. Now, apart from that, you have the transmission noise, the hatchback noise, and you have the underbody, for example, uh, the one here, you know, the underbody cavity flow noise, the aspiration noise, no, that's a noise that comes by virtue of the, uh, the air leakage into the, uh, the passenger cabin uh, in the gaps between the seals, and uh, the driveline noise, okay? And uh, there's also noise generated, you know, the vibration and noise generated when the brake operates, and uh, uh, there's also noise generated by virtue of the tire interacting with the, uh, with the ground. Now, apart from this, uh, you also have the wake noise, the exhaust system noise, the differential noise, and you also have the hood and the body panel noise. And here, are the, 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 these actually vibrate and they can radiate noise into the passenger cabin. Now, apart from this interior noise, you also have the exterior noise, that's noise coming out from the vehicle. So these are just a, a, a brief, uh, uh, indicators of the sources of vibration and noise in a vehicle like car, but there can be, and a car is having a number of components and there are a lot of interactions between these components and they can, and they can be, uh, and there are more than what I have described here which are sources of vibration and noise. Now as regards to vibration, now let's look at this one. Now, so the vibration is basically a, tacti a tactile sensation that is being, you know, which the, the passenger is exposed to. Well, as regards noise, is an unwanted sound, and it's basically oral in nature. Now, harshness is, as regards the, it's more of a, 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 a psychoacoustic uh, uh, thing, which is more of a subjective feeling of vibration and noise. For example, if there is a sudden jerk or if there is a sudden thump when the vehicle passes over a, um, that's an obstacle, or sometimes even when the noise is um, also very shrill, you know, a shrill noise, you know, a shrill sound is also an unbearable thing. Now, as regards noise, it's just not about the, the loudness of the sound, it's also about the frequency content of the sound that influences this harshness feeling. Now, the, in, in a system, like for example, uh, like for example, any vehicle, like you know, uh, which is a truck or a car or, or in a motorcycle, for example. I'm just taking the examples of automotive systems. Uh, here, they, we have what is called the source, the transmission, and the receiver. Now, when these, in these systems, you know, depending on the interaction between, uh, the, in the trans depending on the interaction between various components, you know, it, the medium, which is actually, um, permitting the flow of energy, the, the noise could be vibroacoustic in nature or could be even aeroacoustic. Now I'll explain in detail in the following slides what, how this mechanism of vibroacoustics and aeroacoustics happen. 
Now, frequency. As regards the frequency, and as I said, there are so many components in the car which are being excited at, um, in a range of frequencies. Some are tonal in nature and some are broadband. Now, as regards the action, know that as an engineer, what would you do you know, in handling the noise and vibration issue of a system like a car? Now, for example, in, in most of the cases, let's say, for example, vibration and noise, they are not liked at all. And therefore, one would go about uh, mitigating the noise and vibration or even eliminate it if possible. Now, but, um, it's not just only about mitigating and eliminating, which is most of our activities spent on, but it's also something called uh, an area called um, the, 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 the sound design, in which we intentionally incorporate a certain quality of sound into the system. Now, this is primarily being used in order to represent the excellence of engineering in a product, or it could be also be, it, it could also use to actually um, act as a, an enhancer for the brand image of the manufacturer. For example, um, you might have seen the, the, the vehicles made by manufacturers like Ferrari, Lamborghini, uh, let's say even Rolls-Royce or Harley-Davidson, all these companies actually they incorporate a certain sound quality into their design, into their NVH design. So this is, then, this is, as I said, this is meant to actually indicate the excellence of the engineering or enhance the, or create a uniqueness of the brand image of the manufacturer. But apart from this, incorporating the sound quality from enhancing the image, there are situations wherein a safety aspect is also considered. For example, if you think of a hybrid vehicle or a fully electric vehicle, these vehicles, they emit very less noise and many times it become, become an issue of pedestrian safety. So in, that situation, in, in those situations, what uh, one would do is, is to incorporate a, a a sound you know, generator, a sound generator which produces sound of a particular type which will alert the pedestrian. So um, the sound quality is also being used you know, in, in the sound generating systems, in automotive systems, as also a pedestrian safety device. Okay, now I was talking to you about uh, the, the air vibroacoustics and the aeroacoustics. Now, the structure bone vibrations and the radiation of noise is constitutes the vibroacoustics part, while the airborne uh, noise, while uh, the airborne uh, thing, that's the source of what excites the fluid surrounding it, that's of the aeroacoustics kind. So here, the, see, if, if you consider any system for that matter, uh, it has a source, a transmission, and a receiver. And the source could be mechanical vibrations. For example, if you consider an engine, an engine operates and there is uh, the movement of the masses, some are reciprocating, some are rotating, for example, even the valve trains, the piston moving. And there's also a combustion happening within the cylinder and all these are these mechanical excitations, no mechanical vibrations. But also sometimes there are aerodynamic disturbances. For example, if you consider a vehicle and you have the, the side view mirrors and, and the vehicle passes, you know, there are aerodynamic interactions between the fluid, that is the air, and the, and the, and the side view mirror. And so these are one, these are, this is another kind of uh, source of excitation. Now as regards the transmission, so you see the structure bone case, you have the, the vibration which has been propagated through the vehicle structure. This can in turn excite the body panel. For example, here, the engine vibrations are passed via to the, to the chassis via the mounts. And this chassis it has a body panel mounted on the chassis and uh, okay, uh, uh, via the systems, in fact. But these body panels receive vibrations. Let's say, I'm just giving an example of an engine. So here, so the body panel vibrates and the body panel vibrates and it radiates noise into the passenger ca cabin and the passenger as a receiver you know, feels this uh, noise, which is the transformation of vibrational energy. Now, as regards this airborne noise, for example, as is, the, the source excites the fluid surrounding it. Okay, here in this case, if we, again, if I take the example of a side view mirror, this, uh, the side view mirror interacts with the fluid and there are weak or the, the vortex shedding happens in the, the downstream of the 
uh, side view mirror, and these vertices actually can interact with the, um, the, 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 called the window panels, and these window panels in turn can, so in turn radiate noise into the passenger cabin. So in some cases, so like what I described now, it is something like the source excites the fluid surrounding it, the sound vibrates the vehicle, and there is the body panel vibration and acoustic excitation, and the passenger receives it. There are cases wherein the, the fluid, okay, the, 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 the aerodynamic interaction between the exterior of the body of the vehicle and the air around can also cause this sound, um, the, the disturbances to get transmitted to the gaps in the seals. Let's say, for example, if you have the door panels, um, um, there, are, there are seals you know, in the door panels. So, and these can escape through those gaps and um, acoustically excite the, the, the air inside the passenger cabin and the passenger receives this. So these are primarily the two mechanisms, namely the vibroacoustics and the aeroacoustics, how the energy gets transmitted from the source to the receiver. So again here, what I'm mentioning here is if you consider the vehicle, the overall vehicle NVH, you know, is influenced by the, the propulsion units, the body units, and the drivetrain, and the interaction between all these three. And again, I mentioned here what are the different kinds of components in the vehicle which actually come under propulsion, body, and drivetrain that all are, that are sources of noise. So, so you see, this is just a, a very brief overview of those components in the car which are sources of noise. And these are not, in, these don't behave in isolation because the energy also always gets transmitted from one part of the system to the other system in a connected system. And there are various ways of transfer of energy either through the structure or through the air or the fluid medium surrounding the source. So there are so many, um, uh, there are so many components in a vehicle that can um, excite and can radiate, get, can get excited and can radiate this, can, call, uh, can propagate this energy and contribute to the overall vehicle NVH. Okay. Uh, now so far, we have been seeing about um, different sources of noise in a vehicle. Now, with the changes happening in the automotive industry, um, there are, uh, challenges uh, in the NVH design of vehicles. And let's see what these uh, changes that are happening in this industry that is influencing the, the NVH design in a vehicle. Now, uh, there has, um, if you look at, for example, you know, there, is an, there has been an ever increasing demand um, from the customers from the user perspective to make a vehicle both user friendly and environment friendly. So these are the two main factors. At the same time, um, over the years, the, the, uh, the noise radiated by a vehicle or the NVH characteristics, for example, for example, the NVH behavior of a vehicle also represents the product quality acceptance criteria. So all these factors are actually are some of the demands uh, that are being put on the vehicle design, and they are getting more and more stringent by the, no, uh, day by day, because even the government is coming up with a lot of legislation on this part, and also the citizens, or the, as users, you know, they're also becoming more aware of the, uh, some of the issues associated with uh, very large vibration and noise. And for example, let's look at this first one, namely, namely the power, speed, and performance. This has always been growing. That's, and, and what is mentioned here, there, there are so many factors that drives uh, a need for more power, speed, and performance. For example, more people and cargo movement is happening. There is a faster movement of people between places, and also there is a widening of connectivity between different places where the transportation has to happen. And there is also an, a rise in the you know, performance expectations from the customer perspective. Now, fuel economy. Now, here, as you see, that. Uh, there's more of people migration and growing of cities, and there is a growth in the middle class society, and the purchasing power is increasing. And because of this, 
there is more utilization of the fuel. But we, the natural, the, the fossil fuels are limited in um, availability, and they get depleted over a period of time. So, so this is actually driving to economize on the fuel. Apart from this, with more vehicles on the roads, they're also affecting, you know, the, as the vehicles give out emission, these are also affecting the health, and therefore there is a drive, there's an important drive to reduce this emission. So low emission, it is governed by, it's, 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 it's driven by the health and ecological government legislations and also the, the growing awareness of the citizens as regards the safety as well as health. Now, now more and more cars are, now there, there is a demand from the customers to have more comfort in their vehicle. Now earlier when, you know, few, um, about a few, few decades ago, a vehicle would be perceived as some uh, conduit for moving from point A to point B. But now, a, a car is just not viewed like that, for example. A vehicle is not viewed like that. It's more viewed as also a, uh, a, com uh, a comfort uh, a mechanism, a, a comfort um, sort of a, a conduit from moving from point A to point B. Now, there is a greater demand from the customers to have an enjoyable ride to have less vibration and uh, better, you know, better, com uh, better climatic comfort within inside, inside the car, and the connectivity also. You know, the more and more cars are getting connected, you know, between the vehicles, and also uh, uh, between, uh, and also this, there's a there's a growing information flow, you know, the, and the communication is happening. So, so with the with the systems which are actually enabling the connectivity for information flow and communication and better user experience and automation, these are also actually, in a way, you know, uh, form a most important of the you know, increasing demands in the, uh, in the new the, the design of vehicles. Uh, as regards health, safety, and security, as I explained, you know, occupant safety, pedestrian safety, um, that's because of the more people movement and high powered vehicles being manufactured. Now, all those, also noise and vibration, it affects the driving efficiency of a, of a driver. Then there is a distraction and fatigue, not only for the users within the vehicle, but also for the passers by. Because with more vehicles, we have more exterior, not the noise radiating externally to the vehicle. And this can also affect the, the public. And there are more vehicles, so as I said, more vehicles on road, and so more noise exposure to the public. Now, apart from that, we have the durability and reliability of performance. Now, this is increasing more and more. Now, there is a need for incorporating a desired sound quality into the vehicle. And there is, an, with more components coming into the system, we cannot look at the components in isolation. We also need to understand how these interactions happen between the components because the overall NVH of a vehicle is actually influenced not only uh, by the individual performance in terms of NVH of a component, but also about the way they interact with each other. So there is a need for better understanding. So in the design, there is a demand for a better understanding of correlation between individual and system level and vehicle level performances. Now, these are as regards the, the, the desirabilities you know, from the technology development perspective or technology improvement perspective. Now, from the business perspective, you know, there is always a need for faster time to market at a minimal cost. There are more players on the field and there is a high competition. There is a stiff competition. And there's a need for the automotive industry to quickly, or for industry to quickly adapt to market demands. So there are so many other factors from the business perspective which are also enhancing the, the demands upon a vehicle. Now there are, over the, yeah, so the, over the period of time, there are solutions that are being incorporated you know, to address these demands. And some of these, for example, as regards the power, speed, and performance, now, new engine and fuel injection technologies are coming, and there is a need for lowering the payload on the vehicle. As regards this engine and uh, new engine and fuel injection technologies, these transformations are happening not only in the gasoline domain, but also in the diesel and uh, 
Now, there is a, there is a the surge in interest in hybrid and fully electric uh, vehicles. And even fuel cell systems are also used from, uh, like I said, the, the, the PEM type uh, fuel, uh, fuel cell systems are also, popular, are also popular, but that's not as popular as fully electric because of various technological reasons. But there's also an alternative, the fuel cell systems. Now, fuel cell, uh, fuel economy and low emission, how are we addressing this? Now, there is, a, there is an increase in understanding better and in the new combustion technologies, when the engine downsizing, downspeeding, cylinder activation and deactivation technologies. Earlier, this was not possible. Now, with software, with better software control, this cylinder deactivation and activation is enabled. The technology is improving a lot. And less payload, high pressure operating conditions, because the higher the pressure, the better is the spray quality and therefore better, better combustion. Therefore, there is an improvement in economy, uh, fuel economy, as well as there is also uh, less of exhaust. Now, less friction, that's another important area where people are investing their energy in order to make systems which have less friction in their performance. And new materials are coming, the new valve train technologies, incorporation of EGRs, turbocharging, SCRs, catalytic reduction, you know, selective catalytic reduction to reduce the exhaust emission. So all these things actually are helping to improve fuel economy and lower emission. Now apart from this, for, as regards comfort and connectivity, uh, there is more advancement in wireless systems, driver assistance systems, infotainment and communications. Driverless vehicle is also getting, you know, it's, it's all more on the, adva it's more on the uh, advanced development program. It's not fully functional as a prototype, but uh, for example, Delphi has uh, recently actually had a driverless vehicle which actually was run from California to New York, and it was a good uh, success as far as, as an ADP program. So I'll explain to you why I'm talking about these things because these are all these solutions which seem to happen to handle the increasing demands in the uh, in the uh, in the vehicle uh, design, but actually are also putting a lot of strain in the NVH design in one way or the other. Now, health, safety, and security. There is more need for occupant safety, pedestrian safety systems. As I said here, there are. Uh, intentional like sound generators that are being used for pedestrian safety systems, of course, and there's also need for low vibration and noise design. Now, for example, here in the comfort and connectivity, there is a need for a better vibroacoustic comfort because there is a lot of infotainment, there is also a lot of uh, entertainment systems. If you want to enjoy this uh, ambience within the car better, it's important that there, is, there are no extraneous noise and vibration affecting the audibility of communication between passengers or also communication between the systems and the, and the, and the passengers. Now, from the, from the, from the, um, there's also a drive in order to reduce manufacturing costs to have more integrated designs, which means that we want to reduce as much as possible the joints between the systems. You know, welding, there's more of welding, the welded joints. And therefore, because, and these welded joints, um, actually, they are, are actually, they, they help in transferring energy, the vibratory energy from one region to another region. And therefore, integrated designs, they are good in terms of lowering the cost of manufacturing, but they are a problem in terms of generating more vibration and noise or at least even transmitting more vibration and noise. So considering all those factors, though they have a, the, there is a growing, there are de demands, there are trying, there are solutions that are being worked out to, to address these demands. And on top of that, you have a car which has an innumerable number of parts and there are innumerable interactions. And therefore, it's a very complex NVH environment and there is a very, and therefore there is a complex vibration and noise spectra. If you consider all these things, actually, they are, in fact, actually making the life for an NVH engineer more tough, although it appears to be interesting. So the demands in the development or the improvement of vehicle actually are having a, a, a contrasting situation for an NVH engineer. It is countering 
the NVH behavior of systems, because it's one way or the other, they are influencing this. So as, as you see, so there is a demand, sorry. Okay, so there is a growing demand on the performance of the vehicles, but there is also a NVH challenge. So NVH design is interesting, but uh, they're also very challenging. Now, the important thing is that um, a vehicle, in its, uh, when it's developed, it is important that this vehicle has to perform the way it is intended. So there should be a system which should support in undertaking this designing for NVH in a vehicle with confidence. As you see here, there are so many factors that we actually take into account you now before we set into the building a car. There's so many factors. You know, we take the competitive benchmarking, the development testing, the customer choices, the government regulations, um, all these things. And apart from that, we also um, employ, you know, we need to employ CAE predictions, you know, which, is, which refers to the digital simulation. You know, all these things have to be evaluated and they go into the NVH design of a vehicle. Uh, digital prototype simulation, yeah, so probably many of you are aware of this, and um, so it's, it's basically a computer-based modeling and analysis to represent real-life physical systems and predict the behavior accurately to help achieve desired solutions at a minimal time and cost. There are so many commercial softwares available which help in digital prototype simulation, and I mentioned many of them here. They are, these are only a limited number. There's still more than that. So what I meant to say is that the digital simulation has been long used in automotive industry, just like in aerospace industry or any other industries. The automotive industries have been extensively using digital simulation, and their digital simulation has played a, a major contributory role in the design and development. Um, so like, for example, here, like it has digital, digital prototype simulation has helped in understanding complex vehicle systems and how they interact with each other even before the vehicle is being built. And designs, it, helps in, it has helped in designing vehicles with higher quality and performance. It has actually reduced the design cycle time by providing faster solutions to the market. And there is also, you know, there are situations wherein, you know, you are in the design phase and sometimes your design requirements get updated and digital simulation has permits, you know, incorporating these late changes as well. Okay, so this is not a hundred percent thing, but at least it provides a feasibility for incorporating these uh, updated design requirements. So there's a rapid incorporation to the design even at a later stage and more and with this digital simulation, even before the, the, the vehicle is built, we are able to uh, optimize the design and find out different alternatives of design. So better optimal solutions are arrived at a minimal cost and with keeping in mind the objective function, namely better performance and et cetera, what I had described in the few slides before. And digital simulation also has been used in very helpful in innovating a conceptual design. Even at the conceptual stage, when we want to work out on different uh, concepts, and to quickly arrive at, uh, to groove into a particular concept, the digital simulation also helps in the innovation part of a design cycle. And apart from that, there is also, digital simulation also has helped in avoidance or reduction of costly and time consuming test procedures. In fact, testing procedures are sometimes very expensive or sometimes not possible at all. So all these contributions have been made by digital simulation in an, in an automotive industry. But apart from this, what we find is that there is a need to tap the more potential out of digital simulation. This is because, as I mentioned before, that there is a growing demand on the performance of the vehicles. And this growing demand actually is putting a strain more on the NVH design. And therefore, a digital simulation which can help in uh, handling these challenges in the NVH design is very important. Now let's look at uh, how we can tap more potential from digital simulation. So definitely, 
we definitely need new methodology and techniques. Now, NVH behavior for complex loading, boundary conditions, loading conditions, boundary conditions, new materials are being used. We need to understand upfront, you know, how this material behaves, you know, as in a in a vehicle uh, when they are incorporated into the vehicle, and also. We can't look at the physics in isolation because there are so many functionalities introduced in a car. They interact with each other. For example, temperature, humidity, and vibration. All these things interact, and therefore we require a simulation uh, system which can also account for multi-physical domain interactions. And all these things are required, uh, you know, with higher accuracy. Now, NVH modeling of new design elements, for example, new materials are being used, you know, and we need to predict the behavior of these new materials more accurately. For example, the porous media, the perforated plates, and the super elements being used. Now, faster simulation algorithms are very much important. Now, with more, uh, with, with, with more components coming into the vehicle and looking at the NVH in a holistic view, the, the size of the models are also increasing. And because of that, we definitely require a simulation which has faster, you know, which has algorithms that can run faster and help in extracting the model parameters and also help in predicting the force response behavior. Five minutes. Five minutes, is it? Okay. So basically, so we also have it on the process perspective. So let's say, for example, in this process perspective, what are the improvements that we need to make as regards the process? So is, you know, as a, a process should incorporate simulation and wherein it, the simulation drives the design, okay? And there's also an integrated solution schemes that provide seamless flow of data and results. There should be scope for multidisciplinary optimization. Then uh, there is also need for a documentation of best practices and integrating into the simulation process. There should be better accessibility of data wherein the simulation lifecycle management should integrate very well with the product lifecycle management so that every stakeholder has an access to this information and takes into account this data from the simulation in improving the design. So, so there is also a need for a knowledge upgrade. You know, with more and more knowledge about vibration and noise behavior, we need to also upgrade the knowledge and skills an upgrade of also even computing hardware and system software. So it's not just about equipping oneself you know, with a, a better, you know, with more hundreds of core of sharing memory, uh, but also it's important that the, softest, the system software should be able to uh, help, you know, should be scalable in a way we can perform parallel processing, high computing parallel processing, better bandwidth memory access, and effective utilization of distributed memory solutions. So uh, that's it about you know, how we can tap the potential of digital uh, simulation uh, in order to help in better NVH design of vehicles. Uh, right now, I mean, I'm going to give you a brief introduction about uh, Delphi, what Delphi is for some of you, if you may not know. And, and then I quickly move on to how digital simulation is incorporated into the activities, uh, and into the design activities in Delphi. To move and be moved is what drives us. To red motors, imaginations in everyday lives, from innovations that entertain and keep us safe, to powertrain systems that inspire and from vehicle architecture that empowers every journey to comfort maximizing energy efficient air conditioning. Our robust product and service solutions are paving the way towards new standards of excellence. We're committed to sustained growth and our relationships with the top 25 automakers in the world. We significantly invest in the future through research, development, and engineering. Thanks to brilliant ingenuity, vehicles are becoming more sophisticated. Today's typical car is actually smarter than ever, with as many as 50 computers beneath its skin, over 50 million lines of code, and an entire mile of wiring. Smart cars keep us connected to one another, to our highways, and to our world. More importantly, smart innovations keep us safer, seamlessly integrating complex systems in practical, easy-to-use ways. 
Our powertrain system continues to reduce yearly CO2 levels by more than 12,000 metric tons. For better mileage and longer trips, for greener savings and a healthier planet, for trails worth blazing, fueled by determination, passion, collaboration, and technological grace. Okay, so as regards um, uh, digital simulation at Delphi, now it has been, it's a tightly integrated system. Now there's a tightly integrated, integrated between CAE and product development. And it's employed right from the very early stages of product development process. And it's employed in most all product design activities across Delphi. And using digital simulation, now Delphi has been able to come up with world-class, innovative, and market-leader product, product solutions. Um, this is, in fact, reflected in Delphi's business growth and industry-recognized awards. And product development passes through CAE checklist before the, the design validation approval stage. So it has been getting, there is a, there is a culture which is also being uh, propagated wherein even every product engineer is made aware that it is important to pass through digital simulation even before the concept is approved. So this has helped us a lot okay, in making the designs actually to behave as per our in design intentions. So with this, I would like to conclude my talk, and I would be happy to answer you if you have any questions. See, you can leverage something from Internet of Things. You see an uh, opportunity or a challenge uh, as far as IoT is concerned? Yeah, actually, you know, this has been very much talked about. And um, uh, this has not uh, come up to an extent to the expectation like in software industries, you know, as regards the uh, entire automotive industry as an organizational enterprise. Uh, but in fact, as you see that, you know, if you look at, the, if you look at um, the vehicle development, there's more of electronics and there is more of software coming into uh, the design of cars. Definitely the Internet of Things will definitely help a lot, okay, in, in uh, um, promoting the development of uh, uh, vehicle design. Thank you very much. <laughs>